thank you for checking out our video. Uh, hopefully, we'll cure two problems here. Your tack that's not working, and we'll show you that the uh, reproduction tack boards do indeed function properly. Uh, what we've got here is we've got a 78 to 82 tachometer. Uh, first thing we've done is we've actually removed the uh, old tack board and we're going to remove the needle. Now bear in mind I have 10 minutes to pull this off. To pull the needle off you just want to gently tug upward on the needle and it comes off. Now sometimes the little spindle that the needle rides on will pull up with it so you just kind of want to push down on it with your thumbnail and you know, if you feel it move don't worry about it. It's floating in a little oil canister. Uh, it's not going to hurt anything but if it's outward when you, after you pull the needle off, it will hurt. It will uh, mess the tack up in the operation of the tack. So uh, basically what you want to do is you get, get the needle off, you set the tack down. Now, there's three studs that you have to use, or three bolts and nuts that you have to use off the original board. These three bolts are the ones that actually pass through the board into the uh, uh, circuitry or the uh, clips that hold the printed circuit on a 78 to 82. The guys that own the uh, uh, cars for the 75 to 77s, uh, they don't have it so easy in getting their tachometers out. Uh, 78 to 82 guys, it's a breeze. We get asked constantly how to get the tachometer out and people take the whole cluster out. Now what I'm putting in is called the signal stud. This is a stud that goes through the tack board and attaches uh, or brings the signal into the board. The top hole is your uh, power stud, and you want to put it in, and you want to skip a stud. Whatever you do, don't put, don't put your next stud in this hole right here. There's an empty hole. It's always there. Go to this hole right here and put your third stud in, which is your ground stud. Once this grounding stud's in place, then you're ready to put, I got the nut on backwards, well, let's put it back on the right way. Okay, so we're going to put that on and we're going to tighten that down and you just snug them up to where they're good and tight and you set this aside. We're going to put our three washers in place. The new tack boards, when production is done on them, will not have these washers. They will be incorporated into the board. Uh, I think the main theory here is to debunk the myth that uh, the tack boards with washers don't work. They work. If the boards come from us, we test calibrate each and every board that comes through us. So I don't know what other vendors do. It's not my problem. But I know what we do, and we check them. So we know our boards are pre-calibrated. We know our boards are working. Now there's always a possibility that a board might get damaged in shipment. Uh, there's an adjustable potentiometer on the side of the board that adjusts the signal. Uh, there's a chance it could get hit while it's being installed. Uh, there's a lot of things that can happen. Uh, if you don't uh, think the board's right, it's always smart before you install it to pre-test it. You can do that by running 12 volts to this stud a signal wire from your distributor right to here and run a ground to here. Put a dwell meter on it and check it and see what it's reading. If it's not reading correctly, that is the potentiometer right there. I don't know if you can see it or not. That's the potentiometer. You can dial it in a little bit one way or the other. Now we do have a signal generator that we've uh, made in-house. Uh, it is for sale if you want to buy it. It's at, uh, you can buy it at WilcoxCorvette.com there's two L's in Wilcox. The signal generator will put out a 700 RPM signal, a 2000, a 3000, and a 4000 RPM signal. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to be running down the highway at higher than 4000 RPMs, although there is that possibility. A lot of people like to drag race. And Now, with every tack board you buy, anytime you put a tack board in a, in a, in a car, you have to zero out the needle. You can't make the tack functional if you don't do this. The simple way to do this is from your car, you can run 12 volts from your alternator uh, or from the battery and power up the tack with the wire, 12 volt wire placed there, 
a ground that gets placed right here and when you do that the tack says hey I'm powered up I have no signal I'm on zero okay so then if you set your needle back on it you just set it on there gently when you set it on there you can tap it down to zero and let's hope we can get it close to zero without messing with it and by golly we just might have it and what you want to do is you want to tap it once it's on there then tap it and I kind of tapped it pretty hard really didn't need to tap it that hard but I'm trying to hurry so I pull the power wire off I want to check my zero set and I'm right on zero so the next thing I want to do is I want to power up Frankenmeter which I'm not going to go into how it got its name it's actually Frankenmeter 2 by the way and we put a signal on there now once we turn Frankenmeter on the two levers are down to 700 RPMs so if we've done well our tack and I hope you can see that our tack is reading 700 RPMs now I don't see any reason to calibrate that because unless it's an angle issue with the camera and I'm not a camera wizard but it's on 700 RPMs so what we're going to do next is throw it up to 2000 and if you look at the gauge and I'm kind of tweaking it a little, turning it a little bit so you can see it's on 2000 then we want to hit 3000 and again it's uh, actually it's a little bit off so I may have a, I may have a zero problem I may have a uh, ohms problem but you know what we're within 50 RPMs of being on 3000 and then what we're going to do is hit 4000 and 4000 is right on the money so we're going to go back to 700 and actually that might be part of my problem my zero set may be off because I'm just a smidge ahead of 700 RPMs it it may be nothing but then when I turn the signal off and I'm right I'm just a little bit off my zero set typically you'd want to go ahead and redo your zero set and then check your tachometer again that's why it's important to make sure it's sitting on zero before you fire it up if it's not on zero it changes the scale all the way across the board so this board that we just took out of the bag uh, it's within 50 RPMs at just about every setting uh, I don't think you're gonna find there's 3,000, 4,000, uh, 2,000 and 700 and I don't think you're gonna find anything that's gonna be any closer than that now just to prove this theory I've got an original GM uh, tachometer sitting over here it's not been messed with I have no reason to, to widget up things uh, uh, we'll power it up we're going to go with the ground on the ground stud we're going to go with the signal on the signal stud and we're going to go with the power on the power stud now if everything's right it should be on 700 RPMs and it is and we're going to check the zero and it's right on the money on zero we're going to go to 700 and we're going to go to 2000 and it's about 100 RPMs too fast uh, we're going to go to 3000 and it's I hope you can see that it's about 100 RPMs too fast and then we're going to go to 4000 and it's about 200 RPMs too fast really not a problem this tax functioning properly uh, I don't think you're going to find any tack new or used that's going to be any closer. I think we got lucky. I didn't have to calibrate the uh, uh, reproduction board. I think that tack is uh, actually more accurate than the original GM tachometer. Uh, once again, if any of you have any questions, anybody has any questions, feel free to email me uh, direct. My email address is Wilcox Customer Service at WilcoxCorvette.com. Uh, feel free to send any emails you want. If you're interested in the signal generator, uh, you can purchase that off our website. Uh, thank you and have a good day.